Okay, in this video we're looking at uh, input and output in Python 2 and um, and to start off we'll just think uh, quickly about uh, a, a basic model that uh, we've discussed in the course and that's in the notes and it's uh, the, the uh, I guess the acronym for it would be IPO that's not for initial public offering when you're your uh, computer company takes off on the stock market. That stands for input, processing, and output. And a lot of the questions that we'll initially work on in class will follow this simple model, which is ba the basic idea would be um, that you take a look at, uh, if we actually, if I, while we're doing this, take a look at some of the questions that we have for this course. So if we go into the programming exercises, and even just look at um, uh, some of the the initial exercises uh, in exercise two. If we look at this first one, question number one, ask the user enter the radius of a circle and output the area of a circle as a float. So how does this relate to this input processing output model? Well, the question really breaks down into three parts. Um, and it's useful to think of it this way to kind of break the question down into smaller questions. The first, the first portion of the question is about input. You are um, supposed to prompt the user with this message that they're to enter the radius of a circle and get that information from them. That's the input portion. The, then you're going to, uh, like, th on the final step will be that you're going to output something. You're going to output the area of the circle. So you need to do something uh, around that. Uh, print the message to the screen is going to be the kind of default mode we're going to do this. And in between there, you need to calculate that area of the circle using that radius that they entered. So for this video, we're going to look at those um, look at those three stages, and in particular, focus on the the input and the output uh, sections. Now, this doesn't work as well in the interpreter because uh, uh, the input doesn't work as well. So we'll just start with the output, um, and we've probably already uh, looked at this either in class or. Um, you've probably seen this already, but uh, there is a statement called print in Python, and this is one of those situations where we have to be careful about whether we're using Python 2 or Python 3. So here we're using Python 2, um, and uh, that's that's evident that that that's um, it would be different if we were using Python 3. We would type it in like this. So if you see uh, uh, a print statement with brackets around it like this um, it's not uh, it, it, it just simply means that the person is working with Python 3 so what did the print statement do it just simply printed out hello world the string hello world and you'll you'll remember from our discussion of types that uh, any anything that starts with a uh, either a single quote or a double quote is in fact a string and um, it's a sequence of characters. Now, if you look at when I uh, just created a string, a uh, kind of a literal constant, a string uh, of the of the letters "Hello World," and I typed it in, Python just kind of repeated it back as a as a string with those quotes around it. But when I asked it to print "Hello World," it it looked just a little different. It does not have the quotes around it. It's actually printing uh, whatever that string um, kind of is evaluated to. If we were to print a number, um, it would just give us the number. If we were to print a string that is a number, it would look exactly the same. If we were to uh, ask it to print the string 2 plus 2, it will print it exactly as it appears in the quotes. But if we take those quotes away, then Python is going to evaluate first what 2 plus 2 plus 2 is and actually print it out. So in the second case here, when we ask it to print 2 plus 2, it doesn't see quotes. These are, this is not a string. This is, um, it's expecting it to be some kind of expression that it can calculate. Um, and here it's just uh, summing the two numbers together and then printing the answer. When we print things, we can uh, put a number of things together on a um, single line by using a comma. So we can kind of put the whole equation down here and 
ask it to print this and uh, and and this works this works fine if I take this out for a moment this doesn't work we have a some kind of issue here that Python doesn't comprehend what we're asking it to print so uh, this is the line that's generated the error it sees a string and then it sees a uh, an expression that uh, uh, it might uh, uh, you know want to calculate but together they don't make sense instead they make sense if they're kind of separated one thing at a time that can be evaluated uh, as it is as, as its own kind of uh, uh, literal constant as a, its own kind of chunk of information a string uh, uh, into two integers being added that's fine as long as we keep these things separated by um, by commas and you end up with uh, the you know the ability to put a number of things together so if you uh, in fact calculated the area of that circle in the first question you could create a kind of output line uh, something like this, the area of the circle circle is and then presumably you've calculated it in the in the in the um in some kind of variable perhaps it might have been called area or something like that, which I haven't yet created, so that would create some kind of um some kind of it would create a name error. Let's just create that. Let's assume we got some kind of uh, in, input from the user and it was a radius 10. I'm just going to write it out doing uh, multiplication times 10 times 10 from our equation of pi r squared. So this is the this is the processing step which uh, we're not going to focus really on this in this video. Um, we're looking more at input and output. Um, but there you've calculated it assuming that this was the radius and this came in from the user um, and then we would print it using that last line and substitute in uh, the actual value, the actual variable, which then prints out the value that was calculated. There's fancier ways to do this type of thing to output things, to print things. Uh, there's ways to uh, control how many decimal places things are being uh, expressed to. All sorts of options, but to begin with, this is uh, this is um, the easiest way uh, that we'll look at uh, uh, doing it. Now to um, move on, we'll look at using uh, raw input next. And if I calculate, if I put this into the uh, interpreter, it would look like that. And what ends up happening is it just um, uh, gives me back the information I put here. So here's the information. Uh, I put in between the quotes. This is a string that says enter the radius. And we call this a prompt. This is information that is going to, when when the program runs, is going to be seen by the user so that they know what uh, they're being expected to do. They're being expected to enter some kind of information. Now, if we were to do that in our program, we want to store that information somewhere. We want to store that in uh, some kind of variable. Um, so that it doesn't just go away. So I'm going to enter the radius 10 and now if I look at radius I'll see that I have uh, this value 10. But If you notice and you look closely at it there's a very important issue we have to deal with immediately with raw input which is that the any information inputted using raw input comes into our variable, comes into our program in the form of a string. So even though the user typed in the number 10, which appears to be an integer, it's not an integer in our program. It, it will always be uh, in the form of a string when we're using raw input. In fact, the way I like to do it usually is to use a different variable name just to force myself to remember. So I often will just use user input. Um, and in it goes, it's the number 10. And I, I oops user input so can't tab complete and there it is it's uh, the string 10 now I will not be able to perform the calculation I need to calc to do using that value that's a string 10 and 10 times 10 times uh, so r squared so pi r squared I'll just use the value 3.14 for pi that's not going to work it doesn't uh, 
Python's not happy about this. It's telling us it won't be able to multiply um, uh, this uh, 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 string by um, some other value. So uh, these two values. It can't calculate this. It can't multiply these. Um, it can sometimes multiply a string. It it is kind of a funny uh, use of the of the uh, star operator, um, but in this case, a string times a string, it does not uh, doesn't understand that. Just so you know, you can go something like this, ten times two, which of course you'd expect. It's, this is the same kind of idea as when we said something like um, ten plus uh, ten when we're talking about strings. We're adding together two strings. This is not addition. This is concatenation, and if uh, you look at the notes, the video for uh, variables and types, we looked at that. But there's an, a similar situation with uh, the star operator, where if you multiply a string, it basically recopies it by the number of times that you um, have put, uh, by the number of times you've told it to multiply by. So watch out for that, because that can cause you, that can cause some problems. Um, if you're not aware of it, but what it, what it cannot do is it can't multiply two strings together, hence the error that we're getting. If we use that that input from the user um, to do this calculation, so if I were to ask it, uh, if I were to ask it to multiply user input uh, times user input to get that r squared and multiply that by pi, well, we've already seen the error that's going to generate. It won't it won't be able to do that. So what is the solution here? So Assuming our radius comes in as an integer, which may not be really a very good assumption, but um, we're going to uh, we're going to have to take one more step. We're going to have to take that user input value that we got and turn it into our radius. And we, as I said, we're assuming that uh, for whatever reason we know that radiuses uh, in this particular question on this particular program they're always coming in as integers. So fine we're going to just go ahead and create a variable called radius or I've already created but I'm going to assign it the value user input in its integer form so take whatever that that string is and convert it into an integer and we're obviously we're hoping that uh, whatever the user typed in is in fact uh, something that can be converted into an integer and there you have it you see that radius now is uh, a value that we can use uh, in this calculation. It's in the integer 10, and it calculates out to 314 like we would expect. So just a very important point about raw input, that the input, that the information that you get from the user is always in the form of a string. And it must always go through some kind of conversion if you are going to perform some kind of uh, arithmetic or, or math calculations on it, it needs to be converted to a, a integer or a float. Um, and there are ways that we can do it and check first to make sure that that is possible. I mean, obviously, if you try to convert certain things to, uh, if you try to convert uh, just a bunch of characters into an integer, that's going to generate a, some kind of problem um, because you that you can't re you can't rep you can't take the letters a s d f and make any sensible conversion to an integer value from that. So th obviously there are, are problems that could occur if our user doesn't type in the right thing, and we'll get to dealing with those. But the most important thing at this point is to recognize that that step has to be taken. You must convert it if you're going to perform some kind of calculation, that processing step in this, this model we're talking about you must convert it to a numeric type. And the other type you can use is a float. So if we had the user type in some value, 10.5, then it can return it. Uh, it can turn that into a, uh, a numeric type, a decimal number, a floating point number for us as well. And just one last thing, I think a, a good way to kind of think about this is to always kind of get that input from the user using some kind of variable that you're, that you're that works for you, whatever the name is, but that you're that you're always going to uh, rem you you're not going to use user input in your calculations because you're going to remember that that's the thing that the person typed in. 
that's the string version of whatever th whatever they typed in and you should immediately go to the next step and convert it into a sensible variable name that you can use I think this is really a good way to think about it and a good way to do it and a good way not to confuse yourself about what what type is what um, some people really criticize Python because uh, because you don't have to tell the language what type the variable is going to be and so it is important that you know uh, uh, what your what you're creating in a variable what type it is when you're creating it and this raw input is a, a bit of a trap it's a bit of a place where if you don't think about it or if you don't follow kind of some process or s some kind of little system that you do uh, consistently then you are going to f to run into problems um, and it and you know it doesn't always generate an error where you expect it should if if you you know for if you don't do something properly it uh, it can sometimes kind of uh, instead end up as a bug that's h more difficult and harder to find so I I would recommend following following this little process using a variable name like user input when you whenever you get the input and then immediately doing that conversion step and then you can reuse this variable you can get some more input if you need to use that user input variable again and immediately change it to whatever other variable you're going to use to store that information so that look concludes our look at input with raw input output using the print command and that kind of bigger model of IPO internet uh, internet <laughs> uh, of input processing and output and uh, and that certainly will help you break down many of the problems we're doing in the earlier portion of the course it gives you a starting point you know you need some kind of input you know you probably have to do some output you you can go through the steps of getting that set up while you kind of mull over what that processing step would be it's sometimes a little bit more difficult because there might be some kind of calculation involved at that point so it, g it lets you break that into three parts and and hopefully in initially getting input is a part you can proceed with immediately and uh, and uh, even kind of getting some text ready for an output statement um, and that's it